Morning everybody, it's the next day, hopefully my computer is going to play ball but at the moment all of the work I did on this wheel arch, the videos have either corrupted or they're not uploading. That's a real shame but that's just the way it is. But anyway, that piece is in there. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to sand it all off now and make it look pretty. I won't bother recording that because you know what me walking around at high speed with a grinder looks like. The whole videoing things today is not going very well. And it wasn't going very well yesterday either. So at this stage, I don't even know whether any of my hard work around here was ever recorded. That bit is done. Um, again, don't know whether that recorded and whether I'll be able to upload a video, which is a shame. But we shall carry on. Uh, I've just been making a piece to go in there, just done it in cardboard. Now I'm gonna go make it out of steel and then get ready to weld that in. And once that is done, I can do the final beating of this whole area. This might wanna come forward a little bit. That might wanna go rearward a little bit. I don't know, we'll have a look. And then I can do the final prep and get the wheel lip on. What was once cardboard is now a beautiful butterfly. Well, not quite, but you get the idea. That needs some final trimmage, and then that can go in there. Just need to, whoops, sand the top off. And then I can tack it in. I'm missing the return from there, but that doesn't really matter because all of this gets covered by the new wheel arch lip. Um, before I tack this in, I do still want to offer up the wing and just make sure that I'm getting this sort of forwards and backwards distance right. If I close the door, again, what's left of it, and lift it into place roughly, you can kind of see that um, I don't want to come forward too much. So it's probably going to end up being about in there like so but what I'll do is I'll once I'm I've I'll put the door of the clamp back in the top of the door lift it up get that line right get this gap right and then I'll mark on the sill where exactly I want the end of the wheel arch to fit and then I'll put this which way around does it go that way around I'll move this until that edge is about one or two mil that way of where I need the end of the wing so that when the wing goes on which is sort of one mil thick probably it, it ends up with a nice crisp line so it's quite annoying how one little piece like that could really scupper you in terms of getting the whole of this area aligned and it could turn what was a really nice repair into a really bad repair and I will go and show you now what an incredibly bad repair looks like on one of these. This is how not to repair a rear wheel arch. You might think that this is a joke, it's not. Somebody has actually done this. They've taken what is essentially the same panel that I was starting out with um, rather than cutting it around the fuel filler flap they've just shoved it on and then hammered it their plug welds it's definitely not going to come off but it's not exactly pretty um, and then down here they've repaired the rear end of the sill with an over sill panel but half gobbed it on and half not and then i can't actually open this door to see what horrors lie beneath but you know the door doesn't fit it's actually outside of the wheel arch lip down here so yeah not good and I stress to reinforce that I didn't do that that's just something I've ended up with okay I'm here on the far side of Dotty up against the garage wall just trying to do some re oh, cock. reference measurements this is original Rover metal and yes it's got a gob of filler in it or rust as I should say um, 
the actual panel between there and there hasn't changed. So I've been measuring this bit because there's something not quite right on the other side of the car. That distance between there and there is about 55 millimeters. On the other side of the car, we have a different story. Here we are with my donor panel or repair wheel arch section. And that same area, which on the other side of the car was 55. If you really look at it in detail, it's nearly 60. Well, I'll call it 58. Either way, three mil actually makes quite a lot of difference because although I've, you can just sort of see, I've folded these flanges in slightly to try and help. Excuse the noise and the terrible camera work, but when I try and offer this up, <coughs> this is too long anyway. I need the whole thing to come down lower, so I'll end up cutting the bottom 10 mil off, but it's very baggy. Um, so I need to lose that somewhere. There's two ways of doing it. One is I cut a slot through there, shorten it, weld it together. Two is I chop the flange off and then weld a new flange on when I'm happy with the rear edge of it. Or three is I cut a slot up there and move that flange in. That's the least favorite option because all the way around the wheel arch it has that flatter section right at the lip so if i change that here that's going to look weird i don't want to cut into that section because that will look weird i don't really want to cut that either so kind of at a loss at the moment i'm going to go do some head scratching but either way it's really really annoying it's so much easier when you're fitting panels that are original pressings unfortunately this is not Oh dearie me, I'm making more discoveries of just how shite this repair panel is. <laughs> Obviously, where that wants to finish, that needs to be parallel to there. And at the moment, it's about, I don't know, three or four mil low here. So regardless of what I do with the whole of this area, that is going to have to be chopped refolded and readdressed unfortunately the more meat i take out of it height wise the fatter it's going to get which will just exacerbate my excess girth problem i have here it's a problem i've suffered all of my life but we shall um overcome this the other problem is that when that sits there it's too long at the back as i shall now demonstrate that is that line should be finishing up here so that's not right so it's not going particularly well I think I'm gonna have to chop this roll it all the way around the wheel arch sort of anti-clockwise chop through here shorten it and then weld it in and that, of course, is after I've put that bit in, which I spent ages making. Uh, so, yeah, fun times. Kind of reaching a semi-resolution here. I'm going to keep that bit where it should be. I've cut a slot in the end there, folded that up, and that will work really nicely with the boot floor. That will just twist in, and that will be okay. That is about right. It, that gets all painted black. And that crisp edge can be reshaped with filler. Because I've moved that up, I've got a smaller gap there to fill in, which is excellent. When I hold this with my fingers, it touches really nicely all the way around to about here. Then it goes a bit funny, but I think that's largely because this is so long. The gap on SD1s, when you look at them, even in the publicity photographs, I mean, this is actually better than most, but you almost always have a massive gap here and incredibly tight here and when I removed this door there was no spacers here which means the door is as far forward as it could get already and yet it's tight at the back but that's just the way SD ones seem to be they quite often have a big gap here Dotty doesn't again which means it's quite a sharp car actually for an SD one back in the day these gaps are pretty good so um, that's a result and so anyway and the next thing now that I'm like kind of happy with that bit is to chop this down 
and then start thinking about how to set the gap. Um, I can move this in and out, but obviously that has an effect with how it fits up here. In some ways it's beneficial because it actually twists that in, whoop, like that. Ignore that because that was always wrong. Um, I see that kind of scallopy shape there. That needs to tie in with here. In fact, I might go and get a marker pen and draw where that is because that will help me when I stand over there and look to make sure that that wheel arch curve all looks nice. Um, so I'm gonna cut that or mark it, cut it, and then do my sort of final markings. I might be able to get away without chopping and squeezing that together and narrowing it because I can move this out. I've put a relief cut in here, which means all of this can actually move forwards and backwards. And because it's not tied into the sill, I could pull the whole inner wheel well backwards if I need to. So again, I'm not going to bother recording it because it's really boring and it's fiddly as hell and it's time consuming. But um, it needs to be done, so I'm just going to get on and do it. I'm out in the daylight so you can see what I've done. But basically, I've chopped about 15 mil out of that and then folded the bottom up. I haven't bothered hammering that return in sharp yet because I want to make sure it's in the right place once I because with a nice gentle curve like that I could probably open it up if I've made it too short or fold it shorter if I need to um, but I'll just put it back on the car and see how it fits when I put it on the car last I actually made more pen lines that one and that one and this one so that I can get this in exactly the same place as I had it last time Another annoyance, and I might have pointed it out in previous videos, is you can see there and here and down here, we've got a bit of a wave. So I don't know that this panel's survived the years all that well. It's got a few little ripples, which might be why it's not fitting as well as it might otherwise. But I'll offer it up to the car again and see how we get on. Oh my god, this is so frustrating. Oh my god. Right. This wheel arch was in two pieces. It'll be excellent because that bit's lovely. This is a horror show. If I bend this in, I mean, the height's right now. The actual curvature of the wheel arch is, you know, uniform. And I'd forgotten there's a bit of a detail line here. So that is straight and then it flares out there. And that flare kind of meets with that flare. So that's nice. It will sit like that. There, so that's okay. But it's baggy as hell up the top there. Um, when I put the bottom in, it just wants to spring out all the time. Some of that I'm sure is because we got this action in this area. Um, so there's two ways of doing this. One is I just weld that bit on and I keep you know, fanning about with this one until I get it right. I mean, that looks good like that when you squint your eyes and sit quite a long way from it. Um, yeah, it's going to be more fanning about, I think. Um, I'm also going to have to drive this inner wing that way because this is still sitting off it at the moment. So if I crush that flat there, we're sitting inside the door, it needs to come out and go there. And now I've got a gap where my fingers are of about three, three millimeters. So um, yeah, I need to move this forward. Some of that can be achieved by just by rolling this lip out. But <clears throat> because this is still free to move, I might try and put a lever bar behind and bend it all forward. Again, this is probably a result of that impact damage from back in the day. So more fannying about later. I'm coming to the very real possibility. In fact, I am just gonna do it. There's no way this panel is gonna go on properly because if you try and get this bit sitting right, look at that curve there, it's far too curved. Um, the profile's just plain wrong. The only way 
it's going to fit is if I do it in two sections, which is a real pissing shame because I didn't want to have to do that. But it's got too much material in here. I thought it was denting, but I think it's just a weird pressing. I cut more out of there to try and relieve it, but it hasn't really done very much. Um, I could cut a slot through here, but I think I'd just still end up with a decent crease in there. I might try that first because I know I'm going to end up cutting it to two pieces. So I might as well start a lot of the cut first and just see how it responds. So let me do that. Because this bit is a bit, it's short up there and long down here. So I'm just going to sand that off and then it'll sit a little bit closer. Actually, maybe I can just do it that way. Oh, dearie me. I bet you watch other videos where people do like a montage time frame thing where they just go bish, bish, bosh. It all goes perfectly. Sadly, in the real world, I don't think it's quite like that. Well, certainly not for me. See how much it tucks in, it's horrible. Whoa. I think I'm going to have to cut it. Lame. See what I mean? This curves around quite nicely on the original car. And it's important that the wheel arch does the same. So I can hold that there and it looks great. Um, and that this is why I might tack the wheel arch before I try and fanny about in that corner because the potential is I put that in and then ruin all of this hard work but you can start to see how it's looking like a wheel arch should that has been one massive problem area if I knew how to do it I'd shrink it with a special tool or heat or something but I just don't know how you do that so I'm gonna worry about it later it might be that it's a job for the body shop. Um, yeah, as I say, worry about it later. Talking of later, I'm going to go and have some lunch. 
back after lunch. <clears throat> I have just been revising what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. That bit, I have done some final trimming and shaping and that's ready to go in. And I think I will put that in now because I'll be able to, it's not the welding access, it's the being able to clean it up afterwards. It's going to be much easier if I do that now. So I'm going to go and grab the welder, put that in, then I can weld the wing in, hopefully. I have slight camera issues in that it's being a twat and not working reliably. I think it's probably towards the end of its lifespan and I'm going to have to buy a better camera. But anyway, tack that in uh, just at the bottom because I want to pull that top bit out to match where it needs to go. None of this is super critical because it all gets covered. Well, I say none of it. I want that bit neat up to there and in there, but after that, I don't really care. Because it all gets finished off by the um, wheel lip coming around onto it. That's welded in and cleaned up. A um, bit of filler and that'll all look factory original, solid, can't be moved, jobs are good. Un. Now the fun final part, trying to put the bloody wing on. Uh. Just done a little bit more trimming to the wheel arch, taken all the paint off and then given it a coat of zinc primer um, work the weld through stuff just because I won't be able to get to that to protect it afterwards. Now I'm going to go prepare the wheel arch lip itself. It has taken an incredibly long time. Much more work than I thought it was going to be. Um, but we're very near to the point where we can weld this on or I can weld this on. I've got the door even better aligned because now it excuse me gets that bit more important so that those lines are perfect there I've also been trying to get the gap between here and here about the same all the way along it could probably go in a bit at the top but basically the door as well as going forwards and backwards can of course tip in or out the bottom of the door is so frilly Finding a reference line for that is quite difficult, but I've tried to align it with the front all the way through and keep it consistent. Ignore the front end because there's obviously been weld repair, but this bit's okay. Um, so yeah, what I don't want to happen is for me to put all this work into this wheel arch and then find that doesn't matter what door you offer up, it doesn't want to fit. So this door has definitely had some action. You can see there's a a divot in it there um, so I'm doing my best really I could do with a mint door but I don't have one and the one on that car out there is no better so I'm just gonna eyeball it and hope it's okay it sounds silly but that's the way it is um, yeah so I'm gonna tack it in a few places and then do some final checking and we'll be good to go basically decided that I'd be doing myself and the car a disservice if I was to align that rear wheel arch with a door that I had suspicions might not be quite right. So I've got another door which although it's rusty has never been reskinned, never been smacked as far as I can tell and that's going to offer a much better profile to copy. So I'm now going to put that door back on that car. I'm very tired of doing this now. That door is on. It's gapped quite well, apart from when I fit my grips at the top there. Takes the top in, which kicks the bottom right out. But that doesn't matter because if you've been following these videos, You'll remember I've never touched this sill at this point. I fixed a bit in the top, 
but other than that this is perfect so I'm happy where the arch goes or uh, I'm happy I can position the wheel arch lip in terms of how far in or out it goes because my sill is the reference for that what I'm really happy with now is the curve of that wheel arch profile I think the relief cuts up here um, have definitely helped I'll prioritize this area I'll probably put a tack in there and one somewhere in there to hold that nice and straight and then I'll work my way up it fits really nicely there all the way around to there when obviously I clamp it up this is still going to be a problem area I have thought about chopping it completely and I might still do that but I'll probably wait and see how it starts to shape up when I've got tacks built around in other areas um, one acid test will be to get all this tacked in then go and get my big straight edge and lay it across the wing and if you stand up there somewhere and look down this way and it obviously kicks out that's a no-no and I'll have to do something about it if it looks like it can be managed then I'll manage it but um yeah that's where we are now you can probably tell from my voice I'm quite tired and I probably shouldn't I, I think I will tack it on now but um yeah that does look good all the way down there that flare is what I was worried about see how it bellies out here these doors I was worried that I might miss that if I didn't have a door on the car because I've put my relief cuts in here so this whole panel holding it in my mouth there the camera but you get the idea this whole shape I've got control over it in lots of directions um, so it might sound like I'm and I am taking an absolute bloody age over this but it's the only way I can ensure that it's going to be a good fit not just for the door that's going back on the car but in the future if anyone else you know uh, wants to change a door they don't want to have to readdress this whole area just to get a door to fit so <sighs> right I'm gonna get the welder Motherfucker. Right. One of my problems is I just can't, I need that tacked in the right place. And what I was trying to do was put a big blob of weld in there to just hold it, but I missed and kept screwing it up. The reason I don't want a massive blob of weld in there is because this area, this is one of my pet hates on restored Rover ST1s. That should be a body line. You should still see that. It just has a bead of seam sealer in it. And a lot of restored rovers, you see that all filled in and sanded and flushed and it just looks lovely, but it's not how it was done in factory. So I'm trying to replicate what factory did. So I don't really want a piece of weld in there if I can help it. But right now, I can't seem to find a way of doing it. Um, I don't think clamping it's going to work either. Let's try. No, it just kicks it out there. Oh. This will have been a very interesting eight minutes of nothing happening. I'm just going to snot it from the back, I think. Oh. 
Oh, will you fuck off? any kids watching this never ever bother welding up an old car unless you really love it it will drive you insane motherfucking days right getting somewhere we have decent gap down there it's a bit tight there but I can shape that when the doors off that I'm gonna retack because that in hindsight it's actually quite good I'm gonna pull that lip out a little bit and then tack that flush so I'm gonna open that door use the chisel to move this out slightly tack it put the door closed again and try and move that bit back I mean we are talking Nat's cock differences but can you see how that's about one mil closer together than it is down here I still have the freedom to move this in and out at the moment because I've got my relief cuts on the back side of there oh. I think I might have also just blinded myself door goes open So what was I going to do? Tack that bit. Uh, where's my shizzle chisel? Yeah. Can you see any of what's going on? Probably not. world but it's where I need it and we can all dress this up afterwards to make it look lovely right. door goes closed Boing. so that needs to get pushed that way at the top as I'm sure you can appreciate This might take some time. <sighs> Much better. Right, um, I'm gonna have a tea break because I'm knackered again. Mildly pissed off too, but that's one crucial sort of area done. I might just try pushing that and seeing what happens when I weld it. just pops up there again which maybe isn't a bad thing you can lose that up there instead of down here and it'll just soften actually that looks pretty good anyway that I was worrying about <sighs> it's actually the next day I never got around to welding the rest of this off or on um, all I've done is taken the paint off there 
and had another look at this area. I've also put a piece, a bit of etch primer on it just so it helps sharp the gaps a bit. And what that has revealed is when this is fitting nicely, it, the profile fits good to about here, then that all sits in a little bit. So I'll need to bend this out and I can do that by putting a chisel in here and levering and it just brings that out so i'll tack the remainder of the wheel arch on or certainly up to about here then i'll fine tune that bit put a big heavy tack in there then do the rear that's the plan see what I'm doing. Just trying to make sure I get that flare right. Again the door is not gapped properly. Um, it's in at the top and out at the bottom but when you do that you can see that now I've just bent that out it fits a lot better. This will have to have a skim of filler so I'm quite happy that that sits low because that can all be blended and it's going to mean that at the bottom you don't need any filler and the filler that goes in there will just help you to, to get that kind of swell and curve along the back of the door so I'm going to well I'm going to tack that where it is now because I'm happy with that so I've put a big plug weld there Don't be alarmed that this all looks really gappy now because that flange is the one that had an impact and gone backwards and um, had also had quite a lot of me welding and beating it. What I'm going to do now is go and find my little drill and put self tappers through the holes to pull it all forward. I can actually get to some of this from over here as well so I can move that forward as I move this back and it'll all be welded up nicely and then the whole thing gets dressed so you can see the filler in here all the way down to there but it's coming together really nicely now and I'm happy it's all in the right place I might put a tack in the bottom as well because that fits quite well and then that will help me stabilize that area while I bring those two pieces together to weld it. See how good that looks? It's nice and tight on the door seal too so when you pop the door latch it'll go boing like that as they all should. <coughs> That's the plan anyway. working in a pigsty it's quite annoying keep getting hit in the back of the head with the wing mirror on the other car but yeah that's good I'm gonna go find my drill and some screws and pull that forward that might have looked like a horrible tack weld um, and it was but it got good penetration because that welder left up high and I could just come back and um, finish that off when I've got the welder turned back low and I'm doing all the other ones but the important thing is that that is all now solid can't move so I can move that flange forward Bob's your uncle and your dad what I've got then is a screw with a washer um, 
I haven't tightened this up yet. I've drilled the hole, but I haven't actually tightened it up, so we'll see what happens. But my hopeful plan is that there will be enough clamping from the screw and the washer to pull the panel behind up, or certainly pull them together. So you can see they're moving closer. And that way, when I've done them all, yeah, see that worked nicely. This is quite stiff now because obviously you won't want to compress that panel. So I'm not worried about it changing the line. It's just going to move these two together. So I'm going to drill that hole now and then put another screw through and do the same again. You're actually balanced inside the door. I bet you get the idea. I'm deliberately drilling the holes in the back as small as possible because when I come to plug weld I still want metal there to pick up on. Strangely it's actually going to help with the penetration as well because as it fills in that hole it will absolutely have to be welding it. See how much that pulled up? Well, I, I can, I don't know whether you can. I'm not going full mega on any of these yet. I'm gonna put them all in together, all four, and then wind them in together. I'm always paranoid that you can can't see what I'm up to. Um, my video photography is not the best, but hopefully you can see what's going on here. And as that screw head hits the washer, you should see the gap at the back reducing. getting there again I still haven't done that up fully tight I'll wait till that one's in then I can um, do them all up together sorry do them all up together and then I can swing the door closed and make sure nothing has moved that way <clears throat> Incidentally, I've got the whole of this week on holiday, so I'm hoping I can crack on with this and maybe finish the Rover 400 as well, which has just been sat there. After lockdown, my mojo on that car dropped a little because I can't sell it and I can't drive it, so not a lot of point really. They're all in there. Um, just gonna give it a slight tap. I can get into position.
Excuse me. <coughs> yeah, I want a bigger garage and some light. Fucking thing. So that hasn't changed the shape particularly. That's about as good as I'm going to be able to get it. And where we did have, or I did have, uh, a big gappy seam in there that is now nice and tight. So I'm going to weld these bits where I cut sort of compliance strips and then I can undo these one by one, plug weld the hole, and then do the next one, and hopefully all of that should stay in position. And then I can weld the rest of it, and then the last little bit will be closing up the final seam and then welding it. Incidentally, I'm not gonna hide this either. I was, you know, this, this whole area is the crucial bit. I'm less fussed over there because it's not gonna affect the eye as much as the door gap, which, you know, that's crucial. So that's 100% what I'm concentrating on. Then this shape here, which I'm really happy with now, there, it's now ended up a bit long, but I don't really care because that can all be hidden with filler and stuff and the rear mud flap. So that's fine. So long as it's the right height, which it is down there, that'll come up, that'll be fine. It's just that that detail line is a bit wanky. But if I really care, I can chop the wheel arch through there and then move that around when I come to fit that bit. In fact, I probably won't even bother terminating this at this stage. I'll wait until I get to the point where I'm going to do that flange for the boot floor. Um, that's enough of me chatting. I'm now just going to do all the welding. Cue a really, really long, boring montage. I might have a clean up first, actually. That won't be that. Easy. I'd love to say I was really with happy with that, but it's gone disastrously wrong because look at that. I've got a great big boo here. It's not heat warp, it's just my inability to get the panel to fit right in the first place. So this bit's nice, all the rest of it's nice, but there is something desperately wrong with this area. <clears throat> so I'm gonna have to try and fix that and right now I don't really know how to fix it other than to put a saw through there try and push it in <clears throat> so that's what I'm going to do but after all this hard work it is seriously aggravating I should have picked this up earlier and fixed it properly but I didn't and now I'm paying the price starting to work I can feel that it's the actual inner seal is stopping it going in any further in a wheel arch it's not just the outer it's the inner as well
that is already much better. It's better, but it's not right. I'm going to go and find my straight edge and um, see what I can do. I don't really know what I'm doing here. I'm just making it up as I go along. What I've done is I've figured that the wheel arch needs to go back, but you've got two kind of issues here. One is you've got to get that curve flowing nicely all the way around. And then secondary, you've got the actual flat face of the wing and I'm treating them as two separate problems. So what I'm gonna do is now I've hit that bit in and that bit in, which is tucked that in, ignoring that, the profile of this is actually really nice now. So I'm gonna put a tack in there, quite a heavy one to hold that, while I then try and beat this into submission. And hopefully with that tacked, this will be moving, but at that radius rather than moving the whole panel in and out. So yeah, I could weld that to basically constrain that bit so I could work on this bit. Meanwhile, I have actually smashed up my hand by trying to push on the hammer. And I've got one of those really annoying ones where you like bend your fingernail back, <coughs> which hurts, but doesn't look very impressive. Yeah, <laughs> you can see how this bit was going in and that bit was kicking out. So hopefully I can dress it all down if I hit it in the right places. Oh yeah. Much better. We like that. In fact, all of it could Go a bit lower. That is not perfect by any means, but it's a hell of a lot better than it was. Uh, am I happy with that? Do you know I'm not, I'm still not happy with that. It's something funny. I really, really wish I'd done this in two halves now. Um, it's been a nightmare from start to finish this whole area. I'm going to tack that, stand back and have a look. Painting it white just helps show up the curves a bit better. It's still not right, is it? It's a lot better than it was, but it's still like that and then goes like that. Whereas it should be one nice straight pro. Well, it can never be straight because obviously it dives in, but it's a case of how aggressively does it dive in. <clears throat> look at the rear how it does it in a nice curve and at the front it goes whoop so again there's got to be something to do with this um, I might do exactly what I did before but take a bit more meat out of it 
and see if I can get it to move again. It's definitely that area. That is looking good. Is it me or does that look better? Certainly not as pronounced as it was. The other way that I can adjust this is to pull the bottom middle of the wheel lip out because that hasn't been tucked in yet and that will soften how much dive I need there. Let's try doing that. If I can tap this out. We were bang on 303 which is what, well 302, which is where I needed to be but I'll try moving it out and seeing what it does to this bit. <coughs> That's moved about two millimeters out that whole wheel up lip. doesn't really look any different if I'm honest. Uh, let's try a bit more. Sure, that's moved a great deal. Of... It's starting to look better. That does that's popped out again, so that needs to be hit in. See how that dives in now, or it doesn't dive in, it's um softening this whole flowing curve. Maybe I should hold that in, tack it again, and do some more eyeballing. Ah. Do you know, naively, I thought I could cover a whole wheel arch change in like one video.
again, shouldn't really be using claw hammers for metal work, but... It does the job. Oh, yeah. That looks... Oh, that is beautiful. We have a result. Oh, I'll, I'll get the door out of the way. Uh, how good does that look? I'm really happy with that now. Um, the guys at the body shop are shit hot with filler and curves, so that there could be tucked down. I'll, I'll just put a tack in here. Can you see how that bit is high over there? I might tack that bit, extend that cut through to about here, hit that low, and then weld it up. Ugh. I think before it's in a body shop, I'd get fired very quickly, because it just takes me ages to do anything. Get that a bit low. That is so much better. Where we had like a pointy nasty bit there, fair enough, that's gonna need filler to clean it all up. But the wheel arch profile is now really nice. So I'm gonna go and have a cup of tea, and then I come back and do the final welding, neaten that up with the grinder, uh, yeah, the plug welds, and then have a break. Suitably refreshed after lunch, I'm just going to carry on really. There's some welds that need to be tidied up. Obviously welds that need to be finished. I'll do those first and then I'll clean off the wheel arch lip and make sure that's all good and then I can do my plug welds.
So I've just cleaned that off with the strip and clean disc. Um, I'll do the plug welding now and then I'll wipe and sand down the whole lot area again and then cover it in etch primer just to stop it from rusting. Oh, more welding, might as well leave that off since I'll be doing upside down welding now. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. <coughs> Basically going round with a hammer. I was using my drill, or well, spot weld drill bit that wasn't really working so well, but I'm using a scribe and I'm just cleaning off the red oxide that I put on the return. Doesn't need to be perfect because we're going to have the weld up quite high and it will be um, burning through a lot of this. Then I'm working one area at a time, um, making sure these panels are really tight together. I get good penetration and then we'll zap it. turning the welder right down just to weld up the end of that because it's going to be really hot and it'll probably try and burn back actually that worked quite nicely didn't it I'm just alternating between my power settings whether I'm doing a plug weld or trying to fill in these bits and where I think it's going to burn back do that bit first and clean. There was a bit I was fanning around with trying to get the shape of the arch right. Down.
But anyway, you probably get the idea. I'm just going to carry on all the way around. Some of these I'll have to move this back out or just really clamp it up tight, but it's all much of a muchness. Yeah. still wondering what I'm going to do with this area. It is about four mil too long and although it could be hidden in filler I think I'm going to cut this bit off about there or maybe even higher probably up here then I'll have that out of the way so I can repair all of that bit and then put it back together nicely. The plug welding I've done has worked brilliantly in a number of places. Some of these like that that one, that one, that one, and a couple of along here. Uh, had the welder set up just right, and they hardly need rubbing down at all. But I will just now grind off these final welds, and then I can.
all the welding done. Just gonna sand it off just by hand before I etch prime it. And it, it, it just uh, get a key really. Then I've got ouch. Oh, I've got a rusty door stuck up back. That's what I've got. I don't have any panel wipe, but I do have brake cleaner, which is not the same, but good enough for degreasing and stuff. It smells the same anyway, so I'm calling it the same. If it smells the same, it probably is the same. It's amazing how you can use a clean bit of cloth every time and you get more off. Uh, Now the fun bit. Actually, I'll show you my worlds before we do this. It was all done on fast forward. Um, that's all cleaned up. With the worlds around the perimeter of the arch, I just nipped them back as far as I could be bothered. Same in there, and then all of that bit that we did a couple of days ago now. Oh, fuck off door. Ow. This will be my last bit of video, cause I'm knackered and I can't be bothered to do any more today. Ta -da! It's been a while since I gave myself a ta-da moment. It used to be all the rage on my diesel videos and I don't know what happened. Maybe I just got fed up. But anyway, we have one repaired outer wheel arch lip which is sitting over a new inner wheel arch lip. 
the profile I think is smashing or will be once it's got a slap of filler in it I'm really happy that I put a new door on so that I could get the alignment of all of this bit right and I think it is so that makes me feel happy um, all of that's done again just a tiny blend of filler and what's nice is that it'll all look factory original so once this bit is finished off I'll probably build that up maybe slightly then that will have just a smear of seam sealer in it and then that will finish off in a really nice end of the wheel arch um, that curve which was pissing me off for days that's sorted and we got a nice wheel arch which is all or was it it was off that point there <laughs> so it's it's grown it was meant to be 302 millimeters to there and it is bleh, you could argue that was 302 it's it's in the right place forwards backwards height and in and out so i'm very happy that could be better maybe that could go back that way in fact i bet i can still move that if i club it with a hammer um that doesn't matter that's a bit wide there a bit tight there but these cars i mean if you drop the whole door obviously that gap gets bigger and this gets smaller so none of this is major it can all be accommodated later if it actually needs it but having had loads of sd1s and worked on loads of sd1s that's about as good as you're gonna get it anyway they're never great from factory right i'm going to go and chill out for the rest of the day